All right, in this video, I want to talk about the graphs of sine and cosine. And really, I'm going to talk about only, I'm going to graph y equals cosine of theta. But the way that you graph cosine of theta, um, it's exactly the same thing, kind of the same argument. We're really just going to plot points to graph sine of theta. So, OK, the way that I make sense of this is, again, the first thing I think about is the unit circle, the circle of radius 1. So this is supposed to be a circle centered at the origin of radius 1. Looks a little lopsided, but whatever. So at this point, that would be 1, 0 on the circle. This would be 0, 1. Uh, this point on the circle would be negative 1, 0. And at the bottom of the circle, uh, we would be at 0, negative 1. Okay, so a couple things here. Uh, first off, I'm going to uh, graph using, uh, my, my units will be radians. So remember, when we start at the positive x-axis, we just say that's simply 0 radians. Um, at the top, uh, our 90 degree angle, that would be pi over 2 radians. Halfway around, that would be pi radians. At the bottom, that would be uh, 3 pi over 2 radians. And then we would repeat, we would be equivalently uh, back where we started, which would be 2 pi radians. We've made one full revolution. Okay, so, all right, whatever. Um, let's talk about just graphing here. And again, all I'm going to do is plot points. So I'm going to actually put increments that I marked off. There's 0, I'm going to use pi over 2. Uh, then pi, then the next one would be 3 pi over 2, and then the next one would be 2 pi, and then if you want to keep counting, uh, feel free. Uh, on the left, you would get, well, negative pi over 2, negative pi, uh, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. All right, so, um, and excuse me, I called this the x-axis. Uh, our independent variable, let's call it the theta axis. Okay, that's going to be our variable here. So not x, uh, I'm so used to writing x and y. Uh, this is going to be the theta axis because, again, we're graphing y equals cosine theta. Okay, so all I'm going to do is simply plot points. So my inputs are going to be whatever I pick for theta, and the outputs will be whatever we get. So suppose we just plug in uh, 0. Well, again, I'm thinking about the angle 0, which would put me at the positive x-axis. And, well, if I plug that in, I'm going to get cosine of 0. And again, cosine of 0 is whatever the x-coordinate equals. Well, at the angle 0 radians, the x-coordinate is going to equal 1. Okay, so it says if we plug 0 into cosine, our output value is positive 1. So all this says, it says 0, 1 is going to be a point on the graph. So I'm going to put a little dot up there at 0, 1. And now I just start uh, kind of moving along. At pi over 2, we'll get cosine of pi over 2. But at pi over 2, again, now the x-coordinate is 0. So cosine of pi over 2 is simply going to be defined to be 0. And that tells us that the point pi over 2 comma 0 is going to be a point on the graph. Okay, so I can put a dot right there. And notice as the angle increases from 0 to pi over 2, so you're kind of moving along the circle as, we, as that happens. What's happening to the x-coordinate on the circle? Well, the x-coordinate on the circle, I mean, you're basically moving back to the left, uh, you know, on the circle the x-coordinate's going to get closer and closer and closer to 0. And that's what's happening. So uh, for angles between 0 and pi over 2, it's getting uh, closer and closer to the value pi over 2. It's not a straight line. It's a little curvy. And again, this is just a rough sketch, so bear with me. Um, OK, let's plug in pi. Well, there we would get cosine of pi. Again, at the angle pi, uh, the first coordinate's negative 1. So cosine of pi is going to equal negative 1. So that means we've got a point at pi comma negative 1. So we'll be down here at negative 1. Um, and we'll just put a dot there. And just again, you kind of connect the dots. And it's, a, again, kind of a curvy little function. 
at 3 pi over 2, well, if we plug 3 pi over 2 into the cosine function, I'm thinking, what's the first coordinate? That's what cosine of 3 pi over 2 will equal. We just get 0 there. So now I'm back up here at 0. And then at 2 pi, okay, now I've made one full revolution. Again, I think, what's the first coordinate? If you plug in 2 pi, the first coordinate, uh, in, if you plug, excuse me, 2 pi into cosine, the first coordinate's going to have value 1. So it says at 2 pi, we're back up here at positive 1. Okay, um, so again, these are supposed to be at the same height, a little askew. Um, so, all right. One thing here. Um, notice now, um, in a sense, we're kind of back where we started. So what's going to happen is this, uh, this function, this curve, is just going to keep repeating itself. It's going to keep this nice little wavy pattern up. Um, uh, every pi over 2 that you move over, uh, it'll go from 0 to negative 1, back to 0, back to positive 1, back to 0, etc. Notice that negative pi over 2, so if we start at the angle 0, if we go to negative pi over 2, again, that's going to put us at the bottom um, of the circle, and there the first coordinate's 0. So actually this pattern is just going to you know, keep continuing actually as you go back. You can plot a few more points to convince yourself. But this is now going to be the basic graph. This is y equals cosine of theta. Okay? You can graph y equals sine theta by doing the same thing, plotting points. You're going to see that sine theta is just going to be, the graph of sine and cosine are very similar. You're just going to see that cosine, uh, when you graph sine, it's going to be the graph of cosine just moved over a little bit. Okay? Uh, definitely encourage you to plot the points on that if you haven't seen it, or if you you know if you feel a little shaky about reproducing it yourself, definitely uh, I would say go for it. A couple other things, some terminology. Notice uh, when we started uh, when we plugged in zero, we got one, and then we did kind of we went down and back up, and then we went back to where we started. Notice this length that it takes to repeat itself. Um, that's what's known as the period. So we would say that uh, the graph of y equals cosine theta has a period equal to, well, 2 pi. Because once you travel along the x-axis a distance of 2 pi, you're basically just back where you started. If you go another 2 pi, you're going to be back where you started. Okay? So that's one thing which is known as the period. Um, another idea is what's known as the amplitude. Okay, so the amplitude. The amplitude is always, uh, for a trig function, a positive number by definition. And all you do is, to find the amplitude, I basically think kind of what horizontal line would sort of uh, cut the graph in, in half. And in this case, notice it goes up to positive 1 and then down to negative 1. So sort of our theta axis here would just cut it in half. If you think about what's the distance from that sort of middle point up to the very uh, highest point, in this case that would be a distance of 1, and that's what the amplitude is. So we would say the amplitude is simply equal to 1 in this case. Um, you can also simply get that. If you think about our graph y equals cosine theta, if we put a 1 in there, Whatever the coefficient is, uh, it, it, you take the absolute value. Here it obviously doesn't change, but whatever the absolute value of that number is, that's going to always be corresponding, correspondingly your amplitude. A okay? um, couple other things worth pointing out. Cosine of theta has domain all real numbers. You can plug in any number. It just corresponds to some random angle. You're going to get you know, some coordinate on the circle. Notice the range of cosine. The biggest y value is positive 1. The smallest y value is negative 1. And again, because you're sort of trapped on this circle. So, um, all right, I hope this makes some sense. This, again, is how I think about the graph of y equals cosine theta, at least, um, and try to plot points. So, again, it all comes back to knowing kind of unit circle stuff. So, again, I encourage you to graph y equals sine theta if you're not sure about it. Um, it would be really, uh, you know, a good practice too to make sure that this hopefully makes some sense. So, all right, um, that's it. All right, I hope it helps you guys.